Uh, you know, Nikki, as you were talking about uh, bearing fruit, uh, that's been a theme over the last couple months, hasn't it? Bearing, bearing fruit, that God wants us to bear fruit. And uh, you had sown uh, some bad seed in your life, right? And you were reaping a bad harvest because of the bad seed that was sown. But we praise God that now you are sowing good seed, and now you will reap a good harvest. And I'm sure that's already, you know, showing up in, in your lives. And that's exactly where I want to go in God's Word as we talk about generosity. What are the seeds that you uh, are sowing? And what's the seed that God's sowing to you? So open your Bibles. We're going to buzz through this this morning, but it's very, very important passages. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to give you a moment to turn there because I want everybody to have their Bibles with them and we're going to bring up the lights so that you, if you bring your Bible, you can read it. All right? There you go. So please don't forget your Bibles. I want you to be blessed by God's Word this morning on this very important concept of generosity. God is so generous to us. It starts out and says, remember this. That's an interesting uh, phrase in the Bible. Okay? It, it's, it's like, okay, if you forget everything else, I want you, Paul says, remember this. It's like highlighting it. This section is very important. Highlight it in your Bible. Mark it in your Bible because God's Word says, hey, all right, you can forget some things. Don't forget this. Are you ready? Here we go. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. That is a law. That is God's law. That's the way that it works in this in your life, in our life today. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. That's what happens. If you sow generously, you will reap generously. Now, he goes on to say this. Each of you, that's all of us, every person here, pay attention. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves what? A cheerful giver. Next uh, slide here. And God is able. What's God able to do? God is able, that's right, to bless you. How? Abundantly. Remember what Jesus said? I came that you might have life and have it more what? Abundantly. That's the life God wants us to have, the abundant life. And so here it's saying God is able to do that. If anybody can do that, if anybody can bless you abundantly, who is it? It is God. And you know what? He wants to bless you abundantly, more than you can imagine. So God is able to bless you abundantly so that, there's a purpose word there, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Soak that in for a minute. God is able to bless you all things, all times, all you need. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? He is able. So that you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Next slide. Now, he, that's God, who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. And he will enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Next slide. So, some principles about reaping what you sow. First of all, we all want to be blessed by God, don't we? I mean, God bless me. Oh, Lord, please, you know, is this God, you know, pour into my life, God. Fill me up. Look at what, look at what this text says God's part is in this next slide here. This is God's part. This is what God wants to do for you today. Are you ready? He says he will bless you abundantly and notice the all. That's not part. That's not some. This is God's promise for your life. God will bless you in all things, when, at all times, how all you need, 
so that you can abound in every good work. Now, isn't that us there? Don't you want that this morning? Yes, God. Oh, please, Lord. Bless me, Lord. God, help me with this. God, I'm struggling with this. God, I've got this going on. God, I, you know, God, your word says all the time, Lord, and I don't feel blessed right now. Anybody else not feel blessed? You feel like you're almost cursed at times in this life? Don't raise your hand. But you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> don't raise your hand because people will move away from you. <laughs> but we go through that. It's like, Lord, I'm not living in the blessing. Why, God? Why am I not living in the blessing? Why, God, does it seem like I'm living in the curse, Lord. Why is my glass not even half full? Half full would be pretty good, Lord. I'm not there. I feel empty. Mm. Well, here's what God's Word says. Catch this. Really important. You have to do your part. And look at what your part is. The Bible says our part is to give how generously you need to be a giver, God says. Because I'm a giver. And you're my child. And look what I have given to you. You've got to live as a giver in this life. And not just giving. You've got to give generously. You've got to give abundantly. You've got to give intentionally. Did you catch that? How many of you were intentional about your generosity in your life this week? It doesn't have to just be money. We're generous with our time. We're generous with our talent. We're generous with our treasure. Here we're looking at some treasure. So this morning, how intentionally were you with your gift? Have you planned out 